Hey witches, welcome to Busy Gritty Inked and Witchy, a magical living podcast for the busy witch. I'm Morgan, eclectic witch of almost 25 years, Avalon priestess, and busy witch. Here we'll talk all things witchy from current metaphysical happenings to my busy witch tips and tricks and everything in the in-between. This podcast is my personal journey filled with my knowledge, opinions, and unique way of looking at the world. Join me as I weave the magical and the mundane in every episode. Hey witches, welcome back to Busy, Gritty, Inked, and Witchy. I am Morgan, and I want to start off real quick by saying that the coupon code that I gave in last week's podcast episode for the Coven membership was glitchy. Yes. (laughs) Um, We actually updated our entire website the night that the podcast episode came out. So podcast episodes come out Wednesday at midnight. And like that evening, we updated our entire website. It is gorgeous. If you have not seen it, head to inkedgoddesscreations.com. Take a look at it. The color palette is beautiful. The imagery is beautiful. It was a labor of love and it was glitchy as hell at first. <laughs> um, in fact, my amazing web mistress Angela is still working out some kinks in the coding. It's been a fun week. Anyway, so we launched the podcast and then we updated the website and somewhere in all of that, the coupon code I gave out was glitchy. It works now. And um, (laughs) so if you tried it last week and it didn't work, I'm going to give the code again at the end of this episode. And then you can try it again if you want to join the Ink Spirit Coven. So I just wanted to throw that out there real quick. Now let's get on with today's episode. Today I am talking about your magical phrase. Now this was another shower drop in for me. If you are a longtime listener, you know that my shower time is time when my brain just expands and I I have a lot of clarity and things drop in. And this was another episode idea that dropped in for me. (laughs) So if you're kind of like, what the hell is a magical phrase? I'm going to go over that. I am going to go over my magical phrase. I'm going to tell you how mine originated and I'm actually going to talk a little bit about affirmations in this episode, and I'm going to hopefully help you figure out your magical phrase. Okay, so a magical phrase is a phrase, quote, word, etc. that makes your magic explode. I want to gain clarity from the beginning and let you all know that when I say magical phrase, I do mean things like so mote it be, as above, so below, and even abracadabra. Okay, so that's, that is what I am talking about when I say magical phrase, which it can also just be a word. It doesn't have to be a phrase, but that is a, it's a phrase or a word that you use to send your intention into the world. Are magical phrases a necessity? Like if, if this is your first time hearing about a magical phrase and you've been, you're either a beginner witch or you've been practicing for 20 years, you may not even know what I'm talking about because it's not something that has to be done. It's not like, okay, in order for any spell or you must end every single spell this, this certain way. It's not like that at all. Okay. So magical phrases, words, things to seal your spell or to send them off in the world, they're not necessary, but they are fun. They should raise your magical vibe they should definitely make you feel powerful. And because of all of that, when you say them at the end of your spell or your magical working, it's like giving that intention a magical push. And that's what makes them super fun. And that's why I have one, but (laughs) I've only had one for about three years now. I kid you not. I've been, I've been a practicing witch for 25 years now, and I, I've tried them all. You know what I mean? I've tried as above, so below. I've tried blessed be. I've tried so mo to be. They, they're good. They're fine. They, they end a spell. They give me a clear ending point for my spell, 
But the one that works for me that became my magical phrase only originated within the last four years. So what I'm going to do is tell you mine first, then tell you its origin story. And then we're going to go into hopefully how I can help you find your magical phrase. So laugh now. (laughs) My magical phrase is actually, how crazy would it be if? Yeah, it doesn't sound magical at all. Like, as above, so below, so mode it be. Sound amazingly witchy. Mine is, how crazy would it be if? Now, <laughs> this was one I stumbled upon. Okay, so it definitely has an origin story. If you are like, how in the fuck did you even discover that, Morgan? That's a stretch. So years ago, we are talking pandemic, like middle of the pandemic, So actually, and you know what I was thinking, I was trying to think about the timeline of this when I was coming up with this, and I thought it was 2020, but now I'm realizing it was definitely 2021, definitely 20, so three years now. So I used to do card readings every morning for myself. I would just pull one card to see what the message was or the energy for the day was, and I had this little itty bitty tiny notebook that I kept my daily card readings in, and then like every day would have like a little itty bitty two page spread with my card of the day, the energy, maybe my to do list, you know, but that's what I did every day. And so I was shuffling the deck one morning and was actually shuffling. And this card popped out and I looked at it and it was the same card from the day before. And I sat there and was like, well, that can't happen (laughs) because why? I don't know why. For some reason, I was like, that can't happen. (laughs) Not that that's the message I needed to have, but my first instinct was, oh, that's wrong. Even though I'm in the middle of shuffling. So it wasn't like, you know, I had put the card on the top of the deck and then I had just pulled the top card off. I was in the middle of shuffling. This card pops out. And I'm like, well, that was the same card as yesterday. So that has to be, it, it has to be a mistake. So I put the card back in and start shuffling again. And while I'm shuffling, my brain kicks in. My logical side, my overthinking side kicks in and said, well, you were in the middle of shuffling, so maybe that was the card for you. You know, even though it was the same card as yesterday, maybe today is going to have the same energy. Now, mind you, I'm shuffling this entire time. I'm thinking this. And so that's when I was like, well, how crazy would it be if the same card popped out again? Then I would know it was meant for me. And at that moment, a card pops out of my shuffling and it is the same card. Okay, so at that moment, I went, oh, okay, point taken. Thank you, spirit. This is my card for today. So that's how it started, but this is how it evolved, okay? Shortly, so... We're through the part of the pandemic where it's locked down. That was 2020. And moving into 2021, this is how I remember when it happened. There were a lot of dock workers off of the coast of California who who worked the docks that were on strike. And it just so happened, like we order products. We have products made all over the world. And we order products, gemstones and everything from all over the world, okay? And depending on which country we're ordering from, some of them come into the, um, there's like a port in Texas that they'll come into, or the, the main port is the one in California, and they'll come in on a ship, okay? So here we are. This was right after that tarot card thing, because I remember writing, okay, that was weird, and I wrote it down in my notebook, because I was like, that was kind of cool, right? So... We had the the dock workers were on strike and we had a shipment for that month's subscription box just sitting in a freight liner on the ocean and no one like it it was just sitting there unmanned or I mean, there's probably manned, but no one was unloading. No one was working the docks. They were on strike. So I started like it was getting closer and closer to ship day for us and I was panic was setting in because one of the main items for the box was sitting in a shipping container off the coast of California and there was nothing I could do about it. Now I started out, of course, making phone calls, calling UPS, calling whoever I could fucking call to try and figure out what the hell I could do about this. And that's when I was like, what the hell? I'm a witch. I'll just perform magic. I'll just cast a spell. It'll clear this up, right? 
So I started, like one Monday, cast a spell about having our packages be found, having the strike, and like whatever needed to happen for me to get my damn boxes. (laughs) Okay? And a week goes by. Nothing. So, like, during this week, you know, I'm on the phone with this person, that person, what can be done, da-da-da-da, you know. And I'm physically trying to un- unlock these packages or get these packages off of the shipping container. And so one week goes by. So the following Monday, I do it again. Okay, let me try and cast a different spell. Let me try and do it this way. And so I put all my energy into it. Um, for that second spell, I tried Latin because I have four years of Latin in my history. And I was like, let me try to write it in Latin and see what happens and da da da. So I cast another spell on Monday and you know, I'm making phone calls and like nothing's happening. I'm not having any, any luck, nothing's going on. So finally, it was like Wednesday or Thursday of that week. I finally get someone, like I'm talking to someone who really could help me if they could. And she says, Honey, you're just going to have to be patient. She said, there is nothing we can do. Your box is among thousands of other boxes on shipping containers that are out to sea that nobody's touching right now. Your box is one of thousands. We cannot find your box, honey. You are just going to have to sit still and be quiet. And so, of course, at this point, I'm frustrated as shit. And I, at this point, have not accepted that there's nothing I can do. So I get off the phone with her and I am crying and I am just because when I, my go-to emotion is crying or my go-to way of releasing emotion is crying. I cry if I'm angry, if I'm happy, if I'm sad, if I'm frustrated, if I am over the moon, like this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm going to cry. So I'm standing there frustrated. I'm angry. I'm crying And I happened to be standing next to my altar and I was like, I I mock people when I'm upset. So I'm like, me, 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 my box is one of a thousand, thousands of boxes, me, me, me. Like, oh, I was so mad. So I grab a candle and some incense and I'm holding this candle and I'm like, you know what? How fucking crazy would it be if among all of these thousands of packages that no one's fucking sorting, they get into that shipping container and they find mine right there. They fucking check them in and they get them on their way to me right now. How fucking crazy would that be if among all of these packages, these thousands of packages that you say are sitting there, which I knew they were sitting there. I was angry, y'all. Okay. How crazy would it be if mine are the ones that are found today? And I lit that candle, lit my incense, and I went and calmed down. Four hours later, my UPS app goes off and says, your packages have been checked in. They'll be to you in three days. Four hours later. And that's when I went, well, shit, that's my magical phrase. (laughs) How crazy would it be if? Or you could throw a fucking in there. How fucking crazy would it be if either one of them works for me? Okay. So that's the moment that I realized what my magical phrase is. And here's the thing. It can't be forced either. So like I have tried to manifest with it. Like when you try to manifest with it, like put someone's like, oh, I'm, I'm invincible now with this magical phrase. That's not how it works, unfortunately, okay? And we're going to get into like what makes a magical phrase and the number one guideline that I have for when you are trying to come up with your magical phrase. I believe that this worked so well for me because all of my energy was attached to it without a single outcome. And that's the key. When you are trying to perform a spell and you're trying to do magic, but you want it to have an outcome in a certain way, you want it to manifest in a certain way, then sometimes that can hinder your magic or your spell. Because maybe, yeah, it's going to manifest, but maybe it's going to manifest in a completely different way that you don't see happening. So if you attach yourself to the outcome of a spell, chances are your spell may not work. 
So all of these spells that I had been trying to do for this package, for to, for them to find these packages, was were just simple. I need this package, these packages delivered to me by Wednesday. And then I'm putting a timeline on magic, which is also not advisable. But you all have to understand, I was very frustrated and coming from an emotional place. But I was coming from an emotional place that was actually blocking my flow. So when that woman said that my packages were among thousands sitting out to sea and there was no way. That's what she said. She said, there's no way we can go find your packages right now. And I was like, I don't, I don't like that. I'm snarky. So I'm like, oh, there's no way. Me, me, me. Watch this. And so I think it was that anger, but it was that pure energy from me. And that's what magic is. Magic is pure energy. So I took this pure energy. I used basically her words against her and threw and oh, just threw this magical phrase, blasted it out into the world. How fucking crazy would it be if my packages were found among the thousands at sea? And it also, I guess the way that I phrase it, it almost relinquishes a severity for it as well. Like, all of my casting up to that point had been 100% cast from desperation and I did not see it. But generally speaking, if a spell is cast from desperation, desperation stems from fear and every emotion in the entire world at every emotion that you can possibly have in your body uh, boil down to two. You can, you can trickle or follow roots down to either love or fear. Okay. So spells that are performed out of love are going to be more successful than spells that are performed out of fear because love is a larger vibration, a higher vibration than fear. So that's, that was another thing that I learned that day is I had been casting these spells out of desperation. I need those boxes. I have to have those boxes. There's no other possibility than me having these boxes. I need them right now. And let's face it, desperation is not sexy. It's not. It's not sexy to humans. It's not sexy to the universe. Okay. So when I took that anger and that flow and my power and I projected it outwards again, I came from a place of power. But I came from a place by phrasing it, how crazy would it be if it almost relinquishes any type of outcome to it? Because if it manifests, cool, that was crazy. If it doesn't, fine, that was crazy. (laughs) Does that make sense? So either way, I was covered. How crazy would it be if they found it? Cool. How crazy would it be if they didn't find it? Cool. Yeah. So I think that's why it worked for me so well. It was, it was a all of these factors put together. So I was saying earlier, I have tried to force this. So I have gathered all my stuff to cast a spell and got up on my high horse because I'm like, oh, now I have the key to manifesting anything I want and everything I desire. And I would cast the spell and then at the end say, how crazy would it be if, and then state my intention and then nothing happened because it wasn't coming from a pure place of energy within me. It was coming from a, oh, this is my magical phrase and I absolutely have to use this at all times. And actually I can feel the difference. And that's where you're like, well, Morgan, why are you telling me how to find my magical phrase if it could change every day? Because you have to tap into the energy that's behind your magical phrase. Like that's what makes the magical phrase magical is your energy. And so If you find a magical phrase and you say it out loud and that spell works, then what I want you to do is go back to the energy point that you were at when you use that magical phrase. Okay. It's, it, I mean, I guess technically it's not even about the words. It's about the energy you associated with that phrase. And for me, when I was pulling the tarot cards or when the tarot cards popped out of the thing, that was fun. I was having some, I was just fun. I was like, "Eh, how crazy would it be if that card popped out again? And it did. And then when that woman told me what she did on the phone, I was like, well, you know what? How fucking crazy would it be if my boxes were found then? And it, it came from that place of just pure energy from me. 
deep down inside energy and fun and playfulness. Okay. So these are things I want you to keep in mind when trying to discover your magical phrase. There is one rule. And yes, I say rule. I I normally don't say, you know, rule or have to or must. But this is one of those that I could tell you right now, if you don't do this, it's not going to work for you. Okay. And that is your magical phrase or word must resonate with your energy. This means that it must cause an emotional or energetic response in you. That can be anything from making you feel witchy as hell to giving you goosebumps to just that feeling of like, this is it. And for me, it's a feeling of matter of factness. That is what it is. When I have the the spells that I can distinctly remember in my life that have been successful for me have been ones that I stated matter of factly, this is going to happen. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't care. This is going to happen. This is, this is how it is. And that coupled with how fucking crazy would it be if that manifested? How fucking crazy would that be if I got exactly what I wanted? You're not asking a question. It is a statement to the universe, but it is a statement that resonates at the same level as if you were to say, my name is, and then state your name. So the way that I practice magic is the same as if I'm saying, my name is Morgan, this is manifesting for me. It is the same thing. How crazy would it be if this happened? It is the same energy. Okay. So this is why oftentimes, ugh affirmations may not work. I tried to whisper it, but it's a podcast. So, (laughs) um, I, yeah, I said it. I, I'm not a fan of affirmations. Look, I teach affirmations. I teach, I teach everything. I teach all kinds of stuff that I don't even resonate with because you're never going to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you unless you try something. So even if I've tried it, and it doesn't work for me, that doesn't mean it's not going to work for another person. So when as a teacher, I'm going to teach you everything. I'm going to teach you all these things. If you're one of, you know, my coven members, or if you're listening to this podcast episode, or if you're watching an old video or something of mine, I'm here to teach. So I'm going to teach you everything you figure out for yourself whether or not it works. Okay, for me, affirmations don't work. Okay, I'm I'm letting y'all in on the secret right now. Now, The reason affirmations may not work for some of you, and if you are a witch where you're like, oh, thank God, I thought I was the only one, you're not alone. You're not alone. Affirmations do not work for me either. It is because when you have an affirmation, especially if it's one that you hear or, you know, read in a book or something like that, or if it's one that's supposed to be like a tried and true one, for example, uh, there's one going around or there's, that's been going around for years, but it's like, I am a money magnet. I attract wealth at all times. Those are very common if you're trying to increase wealth in your life. So I say it out loud. I'm a money magnet. And there's something in the back of my head. It's a shadow that's like, no, you're not. (laughs) And I hear it, you know, and I immediately, that's why affirmations don't work for me because I do the shadow work. I know where it comes from. But the words that are coming out of my mouth don't resonate with me. And so for a while there, I tried to write my own affirmations. Again, they didn't work for me. I don't know. There's something about, I think when you suffer from imposter syndrome, um, which I have for years, it's almost like affirmations can hurt you because it strengthens your imposter syndrome. So if you're sitting there saying, I'm a money magnet, Um, people are attracted to me. And, and customers are attracted to me and you already are sitting there with like self-doubt and all of this, then your imposter syndrome then kicks in and is like, you're lying, bitch. <laughs> and the affirmations are not going to work. Okay. So I did have luck for a while. Astrid Kayote, I had her on the podcast some episodes ago, a few months ago. She said that she has had success with the phrase, I choose. Now, I have had phrase, I have had success with that phrase as well. Okay, so if you want to do affirmations and things like, I'm a beacon of positivity, or whatever you're trying to say, 
don't work for you. Because that little voice in the back of your head, that little shadow pops up and it says, you're lying. You're never going to manifest as long as that. So you either have to address that shadow, which I highly recommend you addressing the shadow and, and getting to the bottom of that so that it stops popping up. And so that you truly do believe the words that are coming out of your mouth and you truly do resonate with the words. But if, if you're just trying to almost fake it till you make it, that doesn't always work. I'm, I'm here to tell you, sorry, it doesn't. So yeah, try switching. If you want to do affirmations, try switching to I choose. So I choose to be a money magnet or I choose to be a sexy bitch because you, you are. I'm telling you now you are. You're a sexy bitch. <laughs> so try that. Try I choose. And it, it almost takes that. It shuts that little voice up, those shadows up, but still deal with the shadows, like 100% deal with the shadows. But you have to resonate with those words. So that is where I, affirmations may not work for you. Okay. And that's, I, this is where I kind of wanted to throw that in because we're in a sense talking about the power of words. We're talking about finding your magical phrase, which a lot of people might think, oh, well, affirmations could be magical phrases. And they 100% could be if you resonate with them and if those affirmations make you feel alive and make you feel witchy and make you want to take action and make you just make your magic explode. Okay. Then they can be used, but I don't want you thinking, oh, well, I have to go find an affirmation, even though affirmations have never worked for me. So we're almost talking about two different things, but if affirmations work for you, by all means, you can use one of those to seal your spell. Okay. But how to figure out yours The only thing I have here might be some questions for you to ask yourself because like I wasn't on the hunt for a magical phrase when it, when it happened, it just happened and it was really fun. And sometimes that might just happen for you, but take note of things that pop into your head and release judgment too. Okay. Because when I tell people that my magical phrase is how crazy would it be if, like, that sounds nuts, and I get it. And the first time that I, like, really went to try it after the the UPS woman had pissed me off, and this might be why it failed, I was like, this is so dumb, this is not going to work. And I did have that thought in the back of my head, because I'm like, this isn't even a magical phrase, this is just, like, I don't even know what this is. So you have to release judgment, especially if, and we're going to get to this. If you're going to use something from a phrase from a TV or movie, release judgment now. Okay. So how to figure out, ask yourself some questions and see what pops into your head. Because what we're going for here are gut, gut intuition, intuitive hits, whatever you want to call it. That's what you're going for. You're going for that thing that pops into your head or smacks you in the gut. And then you're like, oh, what was that? All right. That was kind of cool. All right. So ask yourself these questions. How do I want to send my spell into the world? Like, what would be cool? How, how would it be cool? Like, what would be cool to say at the end of my phrase, at the end of my spell? Which can come from, uh, are there phrases from TV or movies that resonate with you? And this is where you've got to release judgment. If you want to pull Sarah from the craft den and by the power of three times three, and finish it out because she says by the power of three times three, make them see, make them see because she's doing a binding spell on everyone. But if you want to finish it out with by the power of three times three, make my spell be or something. I don't know. Um, manifest my smell. Like, uh, no, no. I'm trying to riff rhymes off the top of my head. It's not working right now. Uh, no. So who, where, what are some other ones? There was always one in Charmed, wasn't there? Anyway, you get it from a TV show or a movie, run with it. If it makes you feel witchy as hell and like whenever you would hear that or see it in the movie, you're like, oh my God, I love that. Fucking do it. Release the judgment. Release the shame. Words are words. You're giving power to the words. So it doesn't matter where they came from. You're the one adding energy and magic to the words. Okay. What fun can I add to my words? Because that's what witchcraft is about. Like we didn't get into witchcraft to be stuffy and follow rules, right? I, I didn't. I don't know about you, but I sure, I certainly didn't. In fact, that's why I got away from organized religion is because I didn't like being told what to do all the fucking time. So what fun can you add to your words? 
Is there, do you want to do them in a different language? Do you want to say something that came from a movie? Do, is there a phrase where like you hear it or you heard it on a podcast or you heard it on a YouTube video or you heard it on a TikTok and you were like, oh my God, I fucking love that. <laughs> Write it down, use it. See what can add some fun to your magic. And then the last one that I have is, what do I really want to say? If you want to end your spell with fuck yeah, then end your spell with fuck yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you really want to say? What what for you is going to be like, yes, my spell is together. It's sent out into the world and it's going to fucking manifest. What gives you that energy? Because if it is anything less than that energy, throw it out and keep going. Keep going. For me... How fucking crazy would it be if, or how crazy would it be if that's the energy it brings for me? How crazy would it be if blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yep, nope, just released it into the world. Now I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's out there. It's done. All right. So common ones just to end would be blessed be, so mode it be, as above, so below, as within, so without. And if you want to combine them all, I think the correct way is as above so below as within so without so mode it be now there's another one so it's as above so below as within so without there's another part to that one yeah there is what i should do is pause the podcast look it up come back and then be like oh this is the other part of that but now, now y'all have research. If you're like, oh, there is, there's Google. Everybody can Google. <laughs> um, Abracadabra is another one. I, look, it's cheesy. It's it's from like magicians. But if maybe you grew up loving magicians when you were a kid and like every time you hear Abracadabra, it makes you giggle. Use it. Try it. See what happens at the end of your spell, you know. Uh, Hocus Pocus is another one. Amen. Yeah, I went Christian with that one. Amen. That is how they seal their spells in Christianity. <laughs> and then uh, from, you know, one of our favorite childhood movies, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. I mean, why not? If it made you feel amazingly witchy as a kid, or if you were sitting back watching Cinderella and you were like, fuck Cinderella, I want to be the fairy godmother. You knew you were a witch back then, right? <laughs> So that's what I have for you all today. I hope that this episode was really helpful for you, maybe even shed some light for you on a magical phrase. And if you have one or if you don't have one and now you're like, oh my God, I'm going to explore writing my own magical phrase or trying to come up with one or something. It's just something you want to say at the end of your spell to really push it out and kind of end your spell. So how do you want to end your spell? So that code that I was talking about is for the Inked Spirit Coven. It will give you $5 off your first month's membership. So it'll take the month from $30 down to $25 for the first month. And then when you renew at the same time every month, it'll be the $30. But that coupon code is PODCAST5, like the number five, and it's all together, one word. Now, if you're like, okay, well, yeah, Morgan, but you're doing fire magic in June and July, or sorry, God, I don't even know what month it is, in July and August. We are, but in March, we did using the element of air to set powerful intentions, and there was an entire section of that class on the power of words. Um, and you get access to the Book of Shadow pages, but also the replay, and I highly recommend if you do join you get access to everything in our lesson archives. Go back and watch that one because one of the coven members has an amazing magical phrase that she used. She uses at the end of all of her spells. She shared it with the coven members. It was amazing. We all fell in love with it. I think we all wrote it down. She was like, go for it. It's great. And I, I don't want to divulge that on the podcast because that was a coven thing. But if you're a coven member and you go watch the replay, then you'll know what it is. So <laughs> you can head to inkedspirit.com, enter in that coupon code at checkout, podcast5, get you the first month for only $25. 
We are doing candle magic this month. You can catch up with the on the lesson on candle magic, but in about a week and a half, we have the workshop on candle magic, which is where I'll be demonstrating all the things we, I talked about in the lesson anyway. And then moving into August, that's when we're doing Untamed Witchcraft. I am so excited. So we're going to be talking a little bit about like chaos magic, sex magic, blood magic, the spicier side of witchcraft. And then to end our journey with the element of fire, we're going to be having a huge fire releasing ritual. All of this is online. And that's what we're doing at the end of August. And then moving into September, we're moving into the element of water. So I would love to have you join us. But I want to thank everyone for giving me a platform to share my knowledge, my practices. And thank you so much for being here and for being a listener. Bye.